addressed. If you're going to go to um, the press about Monty, then you need to take into account the other hospitals in the area, which Jacoby is the foil for Montefiore as a, as a public hospital that mostly all the underprivileged go to, as well as overprivileged. Right. Linda, the reason we, uh, we're going after Monty is because they came to us and we did a walkthrough at Monty. We were asked to do a walkthrough. Tony and I did a walkthrough at the hospital. What they said was absolutely true. No one approached us from Jacoby. If they did approach the committee of uh, I beg to differ. One of the meetings, if you go back several months ago, our NYSNA people were here as well. There was a big contingent from Jacoby that was here. Now, we should add them. What's the difference? I mean, they're going to affect all. They're going to affect everybody also. It's another major hospital. I'm sure we have the same problem at Bronx, Lebanon, and every other hospital mm -hmm. in the Bronx. So let's let's um, work it out with her too. And could we also add to the agenda um, defenders? So I could, you know, for the health and social services, could you add that to our agenda? Add uh, what? Sorry. The defender issues that I keep bringing up every meeting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we can work that out. Thank you. I appreciate it. <coughs> uh, Marcy, can you clarify what your, what your, Edwin Diaz would like to know what you're talking about? Oh, uh, it's another issue, Edwin. It's um, the street vendors on White Plains Road. A lot of them don't have permits, and they're selling fruit from trucks. Everyone has a permit. No, they don't. I beg to differ. I wind up pulling the cops on White Plains Road every weekend. That's my big activity. Okay? Yeah, and I can talk to the health department. I do send them out there periodically to see, yeah, if their, if their licenses are permitted. It's been a little while. I can see when they've gone last, and we can request that they go again. I call Joe Thompson every single weekend to see his from. Oh, Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Edwin, go ahead. You know, Marcy, regarding, and everybody here from the elected officials office, you know, one of the things that we seem to not notice, I, I've been in the healthcare industry for over 45 years, and one of the things that really perplexes me above everything else is how we go out of our way to facilitate the communities and inform them about how it is that they're going to have a free health care day on such and such a block and that it would be beneficial for everybody to come and utilize and take advantage of them when all we're really doing is soliciting customers for the facilities that are not giving us anything in the community uh -huh. and I think that it's time for us to bring that to a halt and say wait a minute we're not going to be soliciting any more clients for you until you start doing what you have to do because we've been singing and dancing about this for a long time these people are making billions of dollars and they haven't built one community center for our children, one baseball court, nothing has been done for our community where these people are making billions of dollars. Mr. Schaefer is making five million dollars a year in salary besides personal. Wow. That's just Monty. Jacoby is another nightmare, but the reality of it is we have to step on We got to stop dancing with this mm -hmm. and take care of this because one day Inevitably, we're all going to wind up in these health care facilities. Right. And we're going to be the big boys. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Help us help you. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Um, all right. So, leadership committee meeting met um, on Monday. The, largest, the biggest thing that was done was the calendar was approved. So, if you look at your packet, yeah, the double sided one, there's really nothing on December other than the holiday party. Hopefully that's still going around, that, that um, roll call sheet that I want you to sign, yes or no, whether you're coming or whether you're bringing the guests. And um, in January, the first Monday is normally transportation, but that is New Year's, so it's been moved to the 9th. I, unless there's any problems, Joe Thurston, you let me know. And I know public safety did move it to the third Wednesday of the month because there was an issue with one member on the second uh, Wednesday of the month. Also, more importantly, uh, Einstein could not accommodate us. Einstein, Montefiore, uh, same thing at this point. Could not accommodate us. There's, the room here is already booked on the 26th. So we had to move the meeting up to the 19th. And because the leadership committee meeting is normally on a Monday, and on Monday, the 16th, is Martin Luther King Day, leadership is on the 17th that day. All right, so if you're a, a committee chairperson, just remember if you can't attend the meeting, Reach out to your co-chair. I know Martin Morris has been with Matt Rosso about that. If you can please continue that. We appreciate it. 
That's really it for the leadership committee meeting. I was unfortunately was not able to attend that evening. Community development, uh, Dr. Patel, Mike Quinn, please. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Education, Culture, and Youth Services, Diane Norris. Mike, please. David, Dr. Patel, either one, pass. Oh. Edwin. Mike. Somebody the mic. So Diane. Diane. Right there, there you go, Diane. Good evening. Um, we didn't have a meeting, but first of all, I want to say a couple of things. I want to thank Linda White and say welcome back. Give her a hand, please. She's been doing a lot. But nevertheless, she keeps on working, so she's a good team player. We didn't have a meeting, but we were able to, we tried to work with some of the budget and priorities, and I want to say to the Education Committee, thank you for making the phone calls. And also, we had to review the Yankee Scholarship Awards but we did pick um, four candidates, maybe a possible five, but we, we will see. We're still working on the last one. And um, we do have some very promising people. Those that submitted um, the applications, we did agree on and at least four. Okay, that's all I have to say. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. enough to get the Yankee Scholarship Awards every year. If we don't have enough submissions, there's a possibility we may lose slots or lose it altogether. Um, do me a favor, guys. Wake up. We They gave you all plenty of time to hand in applications. And I know that y'all got some children that could use that money and that fit the description, they do community service or whatever. But this time was the worst I've ever seen. It was like pulling teeth from somebody with lockjaw. So next year, if God grants us all life, I'd like to see 10 or more so at least we have a picking to go through because all we got was four, like she said, possibly five. I was working from home because I've been ill. And they're good. There's nothing wrong with them. But I know that there's other kids out there. Right. So do me that favor. Thank you. Have a wonderful hour. Thank you. Uh, housing, Jeff Walcott. Um, Joanne took a um, note for me when I got home. Okay, she's going to read her notes, OK? Thank you. Good evening. Housing committee met with the uh, Williams um, Bridge Tenant Association in regards to 1541-51 Williams Bridge Road and their deplorable um, conditions, living conditions, and the slumlord that they have. And I guess we refer them to the committee to come in and as well as to contact several people that elected officials. And that's it, basically. And um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving and a blessed week. Thank you. Uh, Jess, can you pass the mic down to Oral? Thank you. The uh, land use committee meeting, we did not have a meeting. However, we do have a meeting scheduled for November 29th this month. And uh, that's it. So we didn't meet. And have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Arlene is sick, Pat Charles. Good evening, everyone. In Arlene Drayton's absence, we didn't have a meeting. The only thing that we're really waiting on is um, information back from, <coughs> excuse me, Iris, from um, Ms. Iris from the Parks Department, whatever we discussed at the last meeting. And we won't be having anything in December. We'll be meeting in February. I mean, January. Thank you. I, I got a question on the thoughts to that. Uh, could you find out from Iris what is the status of Loretto uh, with, with the finances? You know what I mean? From what I understand, 
that money should be with, with the parks right now. What are they doing? Please. I'll pull in and I'll take that seat. All right, thank you. I did, at Arlene's request, I did request a meeting with Iris um, regarding all these issues. I, I have to follow up on that. Martin Morris, or not Martin, no, I'm sorry. Matt Rosso, Public Safety. Hi, everybody. We met last night. Uh, we just wanted to bring one thing to the uh, board's attention as, as well as members of the community, uh, and that's a statement that was issued by all five DAs from New York City, um, and the statement was released in response to what has been found to be a recent uptick in hate and bias crimes across the country, and in particular in, in New York City. So the statement is available on the website. We published a link. It's also uh, in the packet of materials tonight. But basically, I'm going to sum it up for everybody. And that is that if you see uh, a hate crime taking place or are a victim of a hate crime, you should report it to the police or to the uh, Bronx DA's office without fear of any kind of retribution from those offices. So if you are an undocumented citizen, if you are afraid to make any type of complaints, you should not be, okay? I also wanted to say thank you to the police officers for coming out tonight. We will be actually trying to meet with, with, the, meet with the new captain and try to uh, get some items going on between the committee and, and some issues that we're facing there. Other than that, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you in January. Tony Cigarelli. Uh, we didn't meet uh, this past uh, month. However, I want to thank Joanne. Uh, during my absence, my excuses in October, she ran the meetings. And I want to thank personally for what she does. And make sure you're around next year because you're going to do it again. <laughs> Thank you. The uh, Transportation Committee, we had a meeting with uh, Jackie Carter about the Diary Avenue, number five line. It's going to be upgraded starting 2017. It's going to have elevators, whistles. It was a beautiful presentation. Oh. It hasn't been touched since I was like four years old. So. How many years ago? Oh. But I... <laughs> And uh, also, I like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Linda White. Um, Joe, we've I've sent many uh, emails to MTA. I think they know me by heart by now. On the 21 bus on Mars Park, the uh, service is horrendous. Um, Einstein has a jitney that comes down twice a day and picks up in the morning and drops. And if those people miss that jitney, they have to take the bus. This morning, there were roughly 25 people waiting for the 21 bus at Adams Street, across from 180 Street Station. And going home, it's the same thing. Now, I realize East Chester Road is under construction right now. But there's no set times for these buses. They never run on schedule. They are supposed to be like 6.01, 6.15. You may see a bus at 6 o'clock and not another one or another two until 6.30. Um, they said they are going to have somebody looking into it, but can the community board also hop on it beside just my voice and send them a letter discussing it? Chris, uh, you've been working on this issue. Do you want to say something? Hi, I already spoke with Jackie Carter. Uh, one of the excuses that was over there it was about uh, digging that they're doing, especially Con Edison. I personally viewed four buses waiting for more than about 45 minutes right over there at Colvin Avenue and Morris Park just to get the clearance when they were doing the digging in Morris Park. I'll keep pushing, but that's what they're excusing themselves with. So I think it would help if we hear other people complain too. I don't know if anyone else has complained to you personally, Linda. Yes, all the people out. That's one of the reasons. That's you get one of the reasons the... why I took it upon myself to to send out the emails because I've gotten complaints from workers at the hospital. I've gotten complaints from both hospitals. Do you have people you have to reach out to us directly? I can try. Yeah. yeah. You get okay. Okay. And then I, I think Marcy, you don't want yeah, to say Yeah. Apparently, yeah. Right. 
So this is pandemic. It's, it's not just that line, it's the number nine, the seven, the 10, things don't run on schedule, yet they seem to miraculously have a schedule on the website. So you can also talk to Robert Marino. I call him every day. The number two is six minutes off. Anything that's late six minutes has to be reported and recorded by the MTA. So, and that's, that's the ideal way to handle things. If you could get to the website, document everything. Um, right now, I, I want to focus on making sure that we don't get uh, an increase in affairs. But these other, every line is experiencing the same issues. Number two train doesn't show up half the time anyway. So we have the same issue. It's pandemic. So I had to pay $40 to get a taxi this week to get me to work. So Marcy, when you make complaints, do you use MTA info, that info? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, when, I, when I document things? Yes, yes I do. Yes. yes. When I personally yeah. have complaints, that's how I've done it too. And I call Robert. Marino. Yeah. 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 But they, it's like, it's their three version of 311, MTA down info. But print it out. Print out the complaint. Five one one to be exact for the MTA. All right. Thank you, Marcy. All right. Thank you. Any old business? Andrea Siegel? It's not old business, but you had mentioned that you trying to set up an appointment with Iris. Um, when that happens, I'd like the rest of the Parks Committee to be notified. I'd like to be there if possible. Yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Any other old business? Go ahead, Edith. New business. Sandy, you have old business or new business? Anybody old, old business? New business? <laughs> Any progress on that wall on Haight Avenue and um, Town Parkway? No, I mean, I think we need to speak to our elected I pressure them. Pressure the MTA. MTA? <laughs> Why MTA? DOT. 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 <laughs> Andre, can you just, for the, the police officers, just explain that? They were just curious about what that issue is. On Pelham Parkway South and Haight Avenue, I think in a, sometime in the summer, there was a car accident, and the car went into the wall, and the wall is down. And they haven't fixed it since then. And a number of people have been complaining about it. So, we, do we still have Laura from Councilor Vox office here? We have Gina still here. All right, Gina, maybe you can help push this issue. I'll send you the correspondence I have with DOT. Okay? All right, uh, new business, Edith Blitzer. Um, this is regarding <coughs> White Plains Road between Marin Place and Leinick Avenue. We have several empty stores there that were forced to close up their business and it was bought out by Marilyn Sofa, the real. I spoke to Joe Thompson yesterday because it's so asinine to have all these stores close their business months in advance and nothing's being done. It's a desolate area. They're thriving with graffiti. Joe Thompson himself yesterday told me he can't get a hold of Marilyn or her attorney. Uh, perhaps the community board can do something, send a letter or call her to find out, number one, what's going up there and when the work is going to start. <laughs> supposed to be trying to save my yeah, I know. I have got control over here. So you need it on, you let me know. But um, all right. So I very reach out to them. We can reach out to them again. There's no guarantee they'll respond, right? We've not exactly had the best of a relationship with them. No, neither do we. So the last time you reached out, what was? Uh, I don't know if they ever got back. They might have. I, I don't remember. It's it's been a maybe. Six months, a few months, I don't remember. Not but yeah, not recently. Thing, but the thing is, it makes it a very desolate area. There are no lights there. Um, and then no stores. These people lost money. Oh, I'm sure Marilyn gave them enough money to compensate for what they're losing. But the community lost a couple of good stores. And I'd like to know the reason why nothing was being done. It's probably it's probably a legal matter. It's probably, I, well, I'll try to find out what I can. There's no guarantee, though. No I talk. appreciate it. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, other new business. Uh, yes, Jeremy. Okay, so they did raise their hand first. If you don't mind, Sandy, go. All right. So. I didn't get a chance to bring it up at the uh, health and social services meeting because we 
ran so late. However, someone brought it to my attention that there is no blood donation center here in the Bronx. And I would like someone to discuss it or who would we get in touch with to establish a blood donation center in the Bronx. So you, you know about this ever? Yeah, but the Red Cross goes around. There's a company called <coughs> Dry air. There's a company called um, New York Blood, and what they do is they go to the police departments, they go to the fire departments, they go to Jacoby, they go to Montefiore, so and they blood utilize blood. themselves, and the, they have their own blood drives in the facilities and in numerous communities that have mm -hmm. la large numbers of contributors, but there is no specific entity of its own in the Bronx. That's what we, that's what we want. We want a specific <coughs> building somewhere in the Bronx, because if I want to donate blood on a Saturday, I have to schlep downtown or up to Westchester. You're going to have to prove to them how we can otherwise they won't do it. Well, can't, can't they look at Every time there's a blood drive at a police station or at a hospital, if you have an open, if you have a, a center, it's not then stable. people can go in well, at any time, not just on that day. So, Sandy, how about this? So you're on the health committee. As long as Marcy and Joe are okay with it, and do you have a contact there? Maybe we can invite them as a guest speaker. Okay, great. Yeah, if you could share that with me, and then you can share your contact with me. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, so Sylvia Mazzella, you had something? You yes. Had the 49 precinct is going to have their meeting uh, Tuesday, November 29th. It'll be held at Morris Park Community Association. Also, I wanted to bring to your attention Again? the Morris Park Community Association in conjunction with the Roddy Foundation. It presents books with variety. It'll be on Friday, December 9th. It's an evening of reading for a youth committee, for the youth in the community. Newborn to 10 years old, and you must respond by December 2nd by calling Tina at the Mars Park, 718-823-0596 or emailing M P Association at Outlook.com Wear your pajamas and refreshments will be provided. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Tony Sigarelli? Okay, great. Tony Vitaliano? You know, last Sunday I was over at uh, Trog's Neck, uh, the, the, the Maestro's, it's not Maestro's, uh, Barone, Villa Barone. I mean, they did a Veterans Day parade and a breakfast. And it was really, really nice. Uh, the sponsors were Klein, Joe and I, Benedetto, Jimmy Vacca. They, they sponsored and Crowley. And and Crowley. Crowley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Tommy. I'm oh sorry. Uh, it, was, it was a beautiful day. And uh, then afterwards, they marched. I, I, I believe in our board. We have enough veterans. Maybe we should look at a committee, Jeremy, sort of organize something. See, we could explore doing something very similar next year. We have uh, Sylvia who's well knowledgeable in it. It'd be a good thing for our board. Uh, like I said, we have plenty of vets. And it, it, it'd be a nice thing to do. And finally, I'm gonna have Lily pick the winning turkeys out of the basket. And, and then after that, I wanna say, happy Thanksgiving and a blessed one for you and all your family. Oh, I'm sorry, Keith, you did have your hand up. Since Captain Walden is gone, what I want you to do is I would like you to set up something with all the new individual is that runs, runs the precinct due to the fact that historically the, uh, the captains have not paid any attention to the, the four housing authority developments. This man did. This man is gone. It's going to send us back 10 years. So I want you to set up something with this new one immediately because it always happens. I mean, well, I've been with this is like a fifth captain we've been through, me anyway. And I, I'm, I'm used to it. So if you can set up something with them as soon as possible, uh, I, I, would, I would like that. 
Uh, the problem with us is that they send us good people. When they send good people, what happens? They get rewarded. And I said three weeks ago, he got promoted about three weeks ago. No. I said it's a matter of a week or two, a case that off. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure enough, he's gone. Now, the credential, I, don't, I never met this new captain, but hearing his background, it sounds very impressive to me, okay? 4041, Bronx guy, Intel, anti, he's got a good background, and I think I will hook up something and keep, I'm sure this guy will address the same issues, keep walking. In my experience, what is, is there's two different types of captain me. There's a friendly one, that's a people person, mm -hmm. and then there's that militarized mm -hmm. robotic one. So yeah. What it is is, uh, Walton was militarized and he was friendly. I don't know what okay. he, he was giving. He was giving. Okay. okay, now the, the sergeant will speak now with this. I with Captain Alps, and I, uh, I spoke with him for a little bit. Um, Captain Alps is not a... Uh, what we would call a numbers for the sake of numbers guy. He's not going to go out there and, and, and you know target people that don't necessarily need to be targeted. Captain House is all about um, targeting the right people, the, the gang members, the people that are that are causing the problems within the community. Not so much as blanket, kind of like a carpet bomb kind of thing. Um, like I said, his his background is in intel, and he was an anti crime supervisor in Manhattan, New York. So. He, he understands there are there are a lot of good people and there's a very small minority of people that are very bad. Um, so he's not one of these people that is, you know, like I said, a carpet bomb kind of kind of guy. I think he, yeah, just like that. Everybody gets, you know, doesn't matter. It's uh, you know, for him, it's he wants to make sure that we uh, we deal with the, the people that are actually the problem, not uh, not with people that you know that necessarily aren't aren't the ones causing the issues in the prison. I think uh, I think you'll actually be uh, pretty happy with Captain Alps. Uh, Janice, after you, uh, after Bernadette, and you, it's over. Okay, go, through. Janice. No. That's okay. Thank you. Take it off. Okay. All right. Uh, I just wanted everybody to know that the Van Ness Neighborhood Alliance on Monday, December 5th, is our meeting, but it's going to be a very short meeting. We're going to have our Christmas party, and everybody is welcome to stop by, say hello, have something to drink, have something to eat. Everybody is welcome. Also on Sunday, December 11th, we're going to have our Christmas tree lighting in the usual place where we have it, down at the Big Cross in the St. Dominic Square. So um, everybody is welcome, and I uh, just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Jess? Yeah, Chris, she was speaking, that's fine. Your turn. Okay. Um, you spoke about the housing complexes. We have a complex with 741 apartments, and it is no joke. So I hope this new captain comes, comes and pays us a visit, okay? Thank you. Great. All right, uh, Andrew Siegel. Just to make a mention on Silvio Gennaretti that Tuesday night is the 49th Precinct Council meeting. I'm sure that the new captain will be there. If you're interested, come to the meeting. Where in what time? It's at the Tomorrow's Park Community Center. It starts at 7 30. Okay. All right. So Lillian is going to do a raffle. Tony? Draw. All right, I'll do one and then Al can do another. Yep. All right, so last four numbers nine, two, eight, seven. Nine, two, eight, seven. Nine, two, eight, seven. Nine, two, eight, seven. I don't know, I'll just write, I'll just cross out a form and set it on mine. Alright? I'll pick another one. I'll pick one, 9310. There you go. Linda White. Congratulations. So, I'm going to read off the next one while.
that happens. Nine three zero zero. Yeah. All right, Kayla. What the hell? What do I, I gotta come up with? Three turkeys. Three turkeys? Three turkeys? You want three turkeys? Nine three zero one. Nine three zero one. Marty Sackwitz. Where do I go to pick it up? Probably at Mark's office. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a Viking stone. Yeah, it was. What, another one? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Patel had the first one. Yes, uh, he, I have it right here. So, five. He wants a 25. I trust you, Mark. All right, final one, Al, just pull. Nine two seven one. Nine two seven one. Come on, take another one. <laughs> that, that's a no go. Final one. Ten, nine three one one. Ninety three eleven. Hey. Okay, we got we have one more. Hold on, don't throw your ticket away. Nine two nine eight. Oh man. Nine two nine eight. Nice guy. Cece Haas. Nine two nine eight. Alright, motion to close this meeting. Second. Meeting adjourned. Don't forget Christmas party, December 14th, Wednesday. And we meet January 19th. Thank you.